Got the uh, pressure sensor in there, oil change, and we're going to go to the body control module, live data uh, here. So now it should be zero PSI if my preliminary investigation is correct. So let's see here. Oh, hell yeah. Cool. Well, it's not perfect. Um, and I don't expect... I don't expect the uh, sensor to be completely accurate. Uh, I do remember... I did a video with the... What was it? This... Man, what was it? It was on that Honda. I think it was a few months ago because it had some issues with the spool... Or it was a cylinder, de cylinder deactivation system. If I recall properly. So basically it was an oil control issue and that operated off an oil pressure switch integrated on that housing. Well that it was not made with it, but it was a pressure sensor on the housing, like a spool valve in a way. And uh, it had a bias voltage of about like 4 PSI, but it was off uh, once the engine was running, so it wasn't completely accurate. It was like at, at, at 180 degrees, it was at 40 something PSI, which is inaccurate for most vehicles. Uh, it's typically going to be like 20 PSI, 25, depending on the condition and age of the vehicle. But this one is at 2.9, it's 150 something degrees. Well, no, it was 100, 130 something degrees <laughs> off. So this is closest to zero as possible, so it's good. So I'm going to start up and I will take a look at the oil pressure. As it rises, yo. All right. Oh, look at that. All right, that's working like normal. Cool. Uh, this is gonna be a fix. Um, we're gonna address the next PO code, which is that EVAP sensor. But before I do, let's make sure that the car is satisfied with the repair. So we should only have one code now. What, is, what the heck? Did I do that on purpose or by mistake? Oh, that's right. That's right. I don't want a lot of data. Uh, so, the, so technically, there only should be one code now. Which is the EVAP. Mm. There we go. Current history. Cool. Well, it's not an EVAP, but it's a fuel tank pressure sensor. So we're good on the other code. We just got to address this and uh, see if it'll go through its drive cycle. And this car van should be ready for inspection. All right, on to the next video. All right, we're going to tackle that P0452. So I'm, I came into the uh, just the EVAP. Uh, active test function because it'll give me the uh, PIDs necessary for the EVAP system. So if the keys on, engine off. This is a, these are our readings now. I don't know if you noticed, but here there's uh, there's no voltage present on the fuel fuel tank pressure sensor. So uh, the first thing I want to tackle is that five volt reference. I printed out my uh, wiring diagram on my Android printer here. Uh, so the gray and black is going to be our actual 5 volt reference. We got dark green is going to be the sensing circuit and the tan ties into the level sensor which is the low voltage 5 volt low reference. So I think what happens is without reading anything I think this low reference here works off the have something to do with the resistance off the level sensor that, to probably activate, you know, whatever various function the um, that is that is necessary to go through its EVAP testing phase. Um, I, I just I'm just thinking, uh, just my conjecture here. But um, I don't know. Some of the EVAP systems require a certain amount of fuel, and I guess that probably is its sensing of, uh, has something to do with its sensing ability, sensing abilities. All right, so we need to check the five volt reference, which is the gray and black. Uh, been that I put a fuel tank in this car before, I already kind of know where to go. 
uh, because I did have to replace some level sensing issues this car had. So um, I can go to the uh, EVAP sensor itself on the tank, uh, but I'm going to try to go through this connector here. Going through this area right here that looks disastrous. And uh, you can see some of the wires I had to go through and do at one point. But uh, we're going to find that tan uh, our gray and our dark green wire and um, see what's up with it. But let me get this cleaned off. All right, so we're at the back here with the sub harness goes off to the gas tank. Uh, we're going to probably it probably best for me, go to, me to go to the source, but I want to check for uh, we're going to check for those for our low voltage reference. see why some of those are bypassed um, I do have a quick connection quick connects on there from last time and I try to sleep in the best I could so we're gonna check uh, our wiring going to the fuel tank pressure sensor and some of the what's that, what are you? Right, all right. I had a pickup, so let me see if I can get my fluke here at the bottom of the screen so at least we can see. Let's see what some of my readings may be. What we can see at the bottom right there. I think we'll be fine right there. So, uh, I want to. Splice into some of these wires, this harness, and uh, if I find my notepad that I like completely, my scanner. So once we find, so once we find the uh, five volt reference, which is going to be the gray and black, uh, we already know the. Uh, low sensing is going to be the tan wire which is already located tan was somewhere here it go right here so here's our tan wire now um, we could jump off of this but uh i don't i don't know if that would give me the reading off of the level sending unit because that's not the sensing portion there it just sends a uh, voltage to the uh, level sender so technically this should be should be okay the tan uh but i do need to make sure And uh, let's see. I know this is going to be a big problem with the crusties there. Mm. What I want to do, I'm gonna, I'm going to. I know it's probably long-winded, but I'm going to send some biased voltage through. the wires that needs to have the necessary current so we have a low reference sensing and a 5 volt reference so I'm gonna send some bias voltage to the sensing wire from the 5 volt reference which is the gray and black so I need to find that gray and black wire which is I got a uh, let's see if I can get this up a little bit got a little more room here all right so I was able to move this cap. I just took the, this prod, this end off here. It's plastic and this metal, so it 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 did what I needed to do. It's pliable. So I'm gonna leave my fluke here. We're gonna check with five volt reference. So it's not a gray and black, but um, 
I found the three wires that are similar to the wiring diagram. I know sometimes you can't trust them. So we're going to check for a 5 volt reference on our gray and black alleged wire, allegedly. So we got four, come on here. So we got four volts, but unfortunately they're so worn out, the pins are so worn out that we're not going to have, we're not going to have any type of reading on the connector here. Let's try to scrape it. Nothing's going to happen really. Yeah, it's not even doing anything. So there's, I'm going to have to, I'm going to tell you what, I'm just going to bypass this. So what I, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut it anyway. I'm just, because it's just, uh, pull that out like that. Because I'm going to have to do the same thing for the other wires. What I want to do, I'm going to take the sensing wire, which is uh, the green wire here. Pull this out also strip this and send bias voltage around here and see if it reflects on the scan tool so let's uh let's try it right quick all right i'm gonna get this knocked out i don't want to send voltage straight through there so i'm going to use my test light as a resistor So this is what we got now. So let's see if I can put this at the bottom of the screen. Probably gonna get the value. Maybe if I go up some. Making a mess. Hopefully I can get a value while I'm doing this. All right. So our five volt reference and our sensing wire. Theoretically, the fuel tank pressure sensor should reflect now. Yeah, look at that. It's awesome. So yeah. Hey, theoretically it worked. <laughs> All right. So cool. What this means, instead of me going down there and testing this stuff, and like I said, I already kind of had an idea that there was some connection issue because I had to repair these wires before. I'm just going to uh, sleeve and make a quick connect for the corresponding wires here and probably drill another hole down through here and that way once I get everything hooked up um, I might even let me see here well, well I could just knock the connector out I'm just hoping nothing else goes bad because I'm not sure where those other wires go to because I know I'm taking three away now so our tan green so yeah I think we, I think we should be fine if I took all three wires away then those Those other wires should still serve their same purpose. I'm gonna I'm gonna go underneath, strip, and uh, put quick connects on those. These right here on the bottom. If I can bring it through here, good. I might not have that much room. We'll see what'll happen. But let me go ahead and get this knocked out. At least the good thing is when I sent bias voltage through the sensing wire, it reflected. So that lets me know that the computer uh, is sending out 5 volt reference and is able to sense. I just technically don't know if the low volts reference is working properly, but two out of three isn't bad. I'm gonna take my chances right now and we'll see what happened. All right, real quick, I'm gonna show you uh, how I'm tackling this. All right, so I got the female end of a what is, what is, what is, what is the quick connect. Uh, let's see here. So anything that's going like this is going to supply voltage. 
such as this low, uh, it should be the 5 volt reference, the gray, want to put the female quick connect on here and then put it and sleeve it with the insulator or heat shrink. And that way, if uh, it will significantly decrease the chances of anything shorting out, this wire is questionable. I think I got too much on that one. But I'm not going to uh, solder anything on this one. This is this doesn't meet the need for that. Or if it's gonna work just fine. a bad idea to go over it just like a millimeter or so and you can just cut back on it make sure that I have a good tight seal I went on ahead and cut the I think those other wires the thicker one goes to the vent valve I went on ahead and cut that also So basically what I'll do, I, every, every wire that went here, I just want to cut that whole connector out and I'm just going to slide it through here and uh, so the male ends will basically just slide into place and we can have something that I can I can uh, detach if I need to or anybody else that has to service this. I mean the wires match. I found that black and gray wire, it actually goes from the, uh, it actually is made into the sub harness it wasn't going to the main to the PCM uh, where's that other one here we go as far as folding the wire over and getting the uh, insulation and the wire I'm not going to have a 100% connection but I think this will, this will work out so let me get my heat oh shit Ooh, I hurt myself get my heat shrink I think this is the right size the wires the there's that gray and black which is gonna correspond with that gray wire so I don't know where this ground goes but I, like I said I think it's for the vent valve usually I'm wrong some more female ends
I just got the uh, van started up. Wires are down here. It's gonna be, some of them are gonna be a little tight, but I think I can get it to be relaxed. Now here's our new value. It seems to be pretty normal. Uh, of course, the car hasn't went through its normal drive cycle yet. Um, I might be able to have, there might be able, uh oh, let me, see that let me see if there's a leak test per seal. Let's go here. All right, so now this seems to be fixed because now our values aren't stuck at zero voltage wise, and we don't have like a maxed out I think it's millimeters of mercury or something I think I think that's what it is but it's a more fine value than uh, I think it's inch grams so let's um, increase see if the values change which they are which is good so obviously the lower the number of voltage the higher the value of uh, pressure so it's in vacuum mode right now I'm gonna seal system and see how slow it drops now this steel is is not rapid so which is good because the pump is supplying pressure to the fuel injector so that's going to pull the vacuum out of it also if you're not including the vacuum leaks that it may have but this normal this value dropping as slow as it's dropping seems to be normal so I want to say this is fixed uh, the only way we really know is go through the drive cycle uh, let me do the scan uh, as far as the check engine light what do I do all that engine control module trouble codes read codes all right so we got no fault codes great now again I mean I don't really know if it's officially fixed until I go through a drive cycle um, I will have to show that but my wires are going through the what used to be the, um, the female end of the harness here this connector so there's one wire that's loose I'm not sure where it goes I'm not going to stress out about it if there's no immediate check engine light and I will only know how to address it if I go through a drive cycle because I'm not going to sit here and fish for wire I'm not I'm not sure where it's going it could be just a you know just a wire that goes nowhere but what are the odds of that I'm pretty sure it's probably it serves a purpose unless it's integrated with something else but again the check engine light hasn't came back on so uh, it's not at least immediately it's not on so I'm gonna put this back Hopefully, this doesn't get torn up in the process. The wire's here, so uh, I might need to, I don't know, find a piece of carpet or something to put over this in the meantime, because this, this is exposed. I could put a bolt through here, but it's still not going, it's going to protect the wires under here, but as far as moving anything over, this could potentially damage these wires, so. Um, if I find something, I'll put it over here, I'll put it over it, but the wires haven't been damaged from here on over. It was just, it was just the connectors because they were exposed to the elements, so. So it's like the third day. It's Tuesday. Finally got the car to pass inspection. I got the inspection sheet here, which I'm going to limit as far as viewing. So we got the date up there, and, uh... Let's see here. Let's see everything's passed. 
and signed off. So this is done. Uh, let me show you. There's no codes present, no pending codes. No fault codes present. So this EVAP system was a success. There's no soft codes, no hard codes, no codes from the intake runner or the IMT. Uh, the pre fuel tank pressure, which was the EVAP, uh, and the oil pressure sensor. So all three of those are successful fixes. And hopefully nothing comes about as far as having any issues in the future. There's some basic things I need to go ahead and take care of, um, just superficial things, and I'm going to ensure that those are working more efficiently. Let's going to put it that way. But other than that, hey, this world's full of infinite possibilities, infinite impossibilities. Anything can happen, man. You know, this car could take crap on me. This car could, this fan could, like every check engine like could pop back on after <laughs> a result of my inability to repair. You're not going to know. Stay informed. Uh, click that subscribe button. Stay informed. Have that reassurance of my work. And uh, so on to the next one.